Welcome to the third installment of the Pro MB Soccer Podcast. I'm your host, Corey Stevenson, and today we're hosting Gabe Silvero. Today we talk about his past, present, and the future of Pro MB Soccer. Gabe, how does it feel to wear the stars and stripes for the U.S. Uh, national team? Uh, it's it feels amazing. I mean, it was it's a uh, I think it's a dream of a lot of kids that growing up, you know, playing soccer or really any sport to represent their country. So um, it's it's a it's a huge honor, you know, to wear the jersey um, in the red, white, and blue. So what were your thoughts going into the first your first game as a player, like uh, from your aspect, from your viewpoint? I was definitely a little bit nervous. We uh, the first game I played with the U.S. Beach team was against Japan, who uh, have arguably like the best player in the world, and are like really, really they're a really good beach soccer team. Um, so I was nervous, but I mean, uh, as soon as the the whistle blew, those nerves kind of went away, and uh, I was able to, you know, just play my game like I norm like I normally play. It wasn't, uh, wasn't as wasn't as intense as I. I thought it would be, you know, we were playing in a pretty small venue in, in Hungary at the time. Um, so it wasn't, you know, um, uh, it wasn't super intense. It was like a pretty, pretty mellow introduction to the, to the beach soccer uh, world and at the international level, I mean. So compared to what you thought it would be, what it, what it would be, how, how, how was it? Like you thought it was just uh, on a grand scale or more of a grand scale or things you just settled into it naturally. Um, I mean, I, I had a sense of what that the like highest level of beach soccer looked like. I, uh, when I went to um, Virginia Beach, uh, which is like a, a national tournament here in the U.S., I watched. It was like my first, it was my first major competition uh, that I that I was a part of, and just watching like the semifinal and the final of the tournament with uh, uh, like a lot of pro players, I was able to see like you know, what, what actual, what the highest level of beach soccer looks like, you know, really tactical with the ball in the air. Um, so in terms of that, like the style of play, I was, I felt like I was pretty prepared, uh, like mentally for what was about to happen. Um, and I, I don't know, I think I, I expected it to be uh, a lot more, a lot more fast paced. But it was actually, uh, you know, if you're able to possess, there's not a lot of running that you have to do. And, and uh, from, you know, the earlier, uh, my earlier experiences with beach soccer, it was a lot more running, a lot more like 50-50 tackles and like fighting for the ball. And then um, uh, my first game with the U.S., you know, we, uh, we were able to, to keep it, play with the keeper. And uh, so it was, it was a lot more, it wasn't as... Uh, fast pace as, as I expected, I guess. What was it like scoring your first goal? And did, yeah. you, did you win the game? Uh, my first goal, it was uh, it was a deflection off of the keeper's, uh, keeper's shot. So it wasn't like, it wasn't the most beautiful goal. <laughs> it was just like hard, hard work on defense and it paid off. Um, it, felt, it felt great. I mean, obviously, would have rather had one where I, uh, you know, actually shot the ball or like, intended to score. I was just, you know, playing defense and it happened to go in the back of the net. So it was, it was pretty lucky, but it also it, it felt great as well. I think we see like, a lot of times that you, you do what you're supposed to do and you're always in the right place when it matters. So you just by you just playing defense and doing what you're supposed to do, you, you got rewarded for that fact. I wouldn't, in my opinion, I wouldn't even say it was lucky. You was going with your first. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. I guess I guess it wasn't luck. Uh, I mean, I, I don't know. Maybe to a certain degree. <laughs> I'm not sure. I just it just didn't. I don't know. I wasn't. Uh, I didn't like celebrate or anything. You know, <laughs> like it just went in the back of the net. I was like, all right, <laughs> I got the goal. Move so you on. got it as business uh, as usual, and, and not the like the typical soccer celebration style, or you just. You know, Marshawn lets you shake your teammate's hand. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. Pretty much. I, I always just run back to the other side of the of the field and 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 move the game on. I I don't know. I never. I've never been a huge uh, a, a type of player to to celebrate big after goals. You know, I'm just like I'm too focused on the game. I don't know if that's good or not. You know, maybe it's good to celebrate and let loose sometimes. But 
I've always, I've always kind of had a hard time with that. So I just, yeah, play defense, you know, block the, the keeper's shot and winning the goal. Kind of a big weight off my shoulder, you know, it was like, I had my first goal already. And I like, didn't, you know, didn't have to think about that anymore. So that was probably like the best part about it. How was your experience with the U.S. futsal team compared to the U.S. beach team? And can you tell me some of the difference be differences between the two? Yeah, um, my experience with the futsal team was was interesting. I didn't know any of the players. I, I went to a camp. It was supposed to be a preparatory camp for uh, the World Cup qualifiers that were going to happen in Guatemala. Uh, but obviously, with quarantine, the pandemic, that all uh, that all like, got canceled. Um, but yeah, I went in. I went into camp. Uh, in Croatia, I like just met all the guys. You know, we trained once or twice. I wasn't really familiar with the system, uh, with the coaching style. So I, I, I struggled a little bit. Uh, it was about a week and a half that I was there. Um, didn't really feel like I uh, had a lot of chemistry with the guys, with the coaches. So, I mean, it was great. You know, I, I always I always dreamed about playing futsal for the U.S. Uh, I played I played futsal my whole life growing up, more, more than I played beach soccer. So it was really exciting. Um, but yeah, I would wish, I wish that I had been with the guys a little bit more, uh, prior to the camp so that, you know, I, I could have at least known their names, you know, and, uh, and then also what the coach's expectations were for, for beach. I went to a few camps before we had competitions. I, I knew some of the guys already. Um, so it was, um, it was just different stages of like where I was at with the relationships, uh, with the guys on the team and, uh, and the coaching staff. Now, so I was I was about to ask you. So you would say that being the foot, difference, the main difference between the two is that chemistry really impacted your experience uniquely in both situations. Correct? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I think uh, when you know your teammates' tendencies, you know like uh, what the what the game plan is. You know, you have a better idea of it. You, you you've done it before in training. And in, in games, maybe it, it makes a huge difference. Um, and then also there was uh, with with Beach, there was a lot less players um, that I trained with and, and that I played with uh, in the, in the uh, like first few tournaments. Uh, with futsal, there was about 20 guys, you know, and there's only five guys on the uh, on the court at a time. And so during that camp. Uh, with the futsal team, there was a lot of switching, uh, you know, of, of the five that you were playing with. So, um, yeah, I think having less players probably helped out with, with Beach. You know, I was able to get to know people faster. So you so you say y'all had a y'all created a strong bond um, during that time together. Uh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, the the first tournament with with the Beach team, we we were definitely together. You know, it was there was only four teams. Uh, it was in Japan was the strongest one we played in the first game. So that was like, you know, it was nice to get the toughest team out of the way uh, the very first game. And then, um, uh, but yeah, yeah, it makes, it makes a huge difference. And I think that's what, what separated my experiences, you know, uh, with, with beach and futsal was really just, uh, yeah, getting, getting to know the guys. Can you describe some of the differences regarding soccer in Brazil opposed to the U S culturally uh yeah in brazil it's totally different um got yeah, players players will will get looked at at a very early age uh to play for professional like youth academies youth clubs or uh, professional clubs i mean um and there's no like college system over there so players will either go pro or or they don't you know and, and they know at a very very early age uh, another difference is players over there, they, they play every day, you know, uh, here it's, it's much more organized, like through the clubs. There's a lot less uh, like pick up with kids over there. People, kids are playing in the streets, like any field that they can find, you know, and there's a lot more available as well compared to over here. Um, so like the, the amount of time that people, that players spend over there, you know, playing soccer at, uh, at, at earlier ages is, 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 is much higher uh, than it is here in the U S and then also the fact that they, you know, go pro at a really uh, early stage uh, or start training with a professional club at a very early stage. They, they develop a lot more than the players do uh, here, I'm pretty sure. You know, uh, here we go to college, you play club, you train like twice a week, maybe three times a week. 
uh, you go to college and a lot of times the players don't go pro until they're uh, like 20, 21, 22, uh, sometimes even later. Um, but there's a lot of professional teams starting up here in the U.S. in lower divisions. So I think, uh, you know, younger players will get a chance to be in the professional environment at an earlier stage. And uh, I think that that's going to be huge for, for the development of soccer here in the U.S. And it'll you know bring it a, a little bit closer to what the level is in Brazil. You know, and then also uh, soccer in Brazil is that's the main sport here. We got baseball, basketball, football that soccer is competing with. So, you know, a lot of the top athletes, they're not choosing soccer over there. That's the sport that they choose. So would you say that you don't feel like the college, the college system is wasting like the prime years of an athlete where they opposed to where they could be going at, in a professional setting, playing in a professional setting? Yeah, I think that if players want to go pro, they should uh, go pro at an earlier earlier stage for sure, be in a professional environment. Uh, college, there's a lot of distractions. Uh, so, And then also, if you're not going to one of the top programs, uh, you're going to have a hard time getting looks. Um, so, yeah, I think for, for, the, for, you know, to be a better soccer country, I think we got probably got to look away from from college soccer, as bad as, bad as that sounds. I mean, obviously, school is super important, and it gives gives the players, you know, a, a option B, uh, you know, outside of soccer. But if you know at an earlier point that you you, you want to go pro and you want to be the best player that you, you can be, I, I think that skipping or at least do maybe doing an online, you know, schooling rather than being like a college program, necessarily, I think uh, is probably the better move. So for me and some people that might view this, can you describe to me? what life as a prospect in Brazil might look like? How, how, do, how do professional teams contact you? How does that system work? Uh, to be honest, I'm not, I'm not too familiar with it. Like, I grew up here in the U.S. my whole life. Um, I don't really know what, what, what it's like there. But I know, I mean, I've, I've heard stories, many stories of uh, players, you know, uh, getting scouted, like in the favelas and like the, the really poor neighborhoods, you know, by professional clubs at like age six, you know, like super, super early. Um, and so, yeah, that, and I think that's where a lot of the, uh, the pro clubs uh, look you know, for players is uh, in those poor areas. Cause they know that they're, you know, they, they, they're they really passionate. They're very hungry. Like, uh, and that's where a lot of the best players have come from. So uh, that's, that's all I know, but I, I honestly don't have like a whole lot of experience and knowledge with, uh, with the way that it's set up there besides what I just said. It's fine. So now I want to transition to something a little bit different to, to pro and B soccer. Excuse me. Why do you specifically endorse pro and B soccer? Um, well, I know I've known Tig for for a long time. He was my high school uh, coach, and I know how passionate he is about the beach soccer game. I know how much time he's committed, how much time and energy, and uh, it's been it's been beautiful to watch. You know the NorCal club grow along with uh, you know his events uh, through California, and um, so I, I mean it's for me it's you know knowing Tig makes it makes it really hard not to uh, to support pro and beach soccer. You know understanding what, what he's done for the game and what his vision is, um, I, I firmly stand behind you know what he represents and what he's trying to build. I, you know I I've, I fell in love with the game. Um, and I, I would love to make it, you know, a, a, you know, a career of mine in some way, whether that's like coaching, you know, maybe playing professionally, like here or in another country um, at some point. Uh, but yeah, I think uh, Pro-Am has done a lot for, for beach soccer and will continue to do that in the, on the following years. So can you tell me a little bit about your connection with Todd? That, that connection dates back to your freshman year of high school, right? Yeah. Yeah, he was my high school coach, JV high school coach my freshman year. And uh, he, uh, you know, uh, I, I used to go to his tournaments, like his beach soccer tournaments in Santa Cruz and Ocean Beach when I was younger. It was like just for fun at that time. I didn't realize like how, I didn't realize that the U.S. Federation had like a, a beach soccer team. And um, he was close with, with an older cousin of mine and uh, my cousin's good friend. So we were all like connected. You know, um, like it was a small community. There's not a lot of people that, that play beach soccer in the Bay Area. So 
Uh, yeah, from high school JV soccer to, you know, his, his tournaments, I, I was always around Ty, and uh, we stayed pretty close over the years. How was Ty as a motivator as your high school coach? How did, how did Ty motivate you? He was a great motivator. I mean, we, uh, we actually went undefeated that year, so he uh, definitely inspired a lot of guys on the team. You know, we, it was uh, it was a really fun season, and Ty did a, a good job of putting the pieces together. Um, and we had, yeah, we had a lot of success that, that one year that I played with him. Correct me if I'm wrong, but one time you got angry at Ty for pushing beach soccer. Can you tell me a little bit about that? <laughs> yeah. So he, it was during a time where I was like pretty, pretty much done with college. You know, I was like transitioning from a time where. Um, I like was certain that professional soccer was what I wanted to do. And now I was like kind of on the border, you know, there was, uh, there was uh, some opportunities happening. I want to take advantage, uh, you know, playing at like a semi-professional level, like, because there's, there's a lot of scouts, like, even if you're, you're playing there. Uh, so I, I, that's where I wanted to focus my time and energy during that time. And, uh, Ty was, I remember he sent me a, he sent me an email trying to, a pretty long email, you know, trying to convince me to, to step aside from the outdoor game and, and, and you know, get into uh, beach soccer uh, with, with all the opportunities that there are, you know, tournaments in other countries. Um, and it's a lot bigger in every, you know, most other places, South America and Europe than it is here in the U.S. Uh, and I didn't realize that at the time. But I was, I was pretty upset with him because he was, like, you know, trying to push me away from my, my original dream, which was to play professional outdoor soccer. Um, but, you know, and it's kind of funny, a couple years later, and I'm, I'm, I'm playing – beach soccer <laughs> and uh you know got to experience some of the things that he told me i was going to experience in that email so it's, it's funny you know i was mad at him but also uh i i saw like his his good intention behind it, it wasn't like him you know uh, trying to trying to get me to stop pursuing my dream it was just kind of like alter it and take advantage of an opportunity that he he knew that uh, was there for me how do you, if you don't mind answering this question, how do you think your career would have been different if you had pursued your original goal of just continuing to play in the grass? Um, <laughs> that's a good question. I think that I definitely had what it uh, took to at least play in the second division, you know, here in the U.S. Um, or maybe even like a lower division in other countries. But and you, you spend a lot of time uh, and money um, uh, in order to put yourself in those situations where you can get, you know, opportunities. And um, I think I could have, I could have had like, you know, uh, a, a few years like at a second division, but I don't know if I had what it took to play at the highest level. And I kind of like sensed that at a certain point. So that's why it made more sense for me to, to step away and, um, you know, focus on other things. It's like, um, I don't know. I just, I just followed my intuition, I guess. <laughs> I don't think uh, spending more time and energy to play professional grass, uh, yeah, would have made sense. So yeah, I don't know if that answers the question or not. You, you answered. It. Thank you. What age did you start? At, did you start playing with the Brazilians of the Bay team? Um, it was when I was in high school. So I think like my sophomore year, right after uh, Ty coached me. Maybe earlier. When it was one around uh, when I was 14, 15 years old. So, do, so transitioning from that, do you think starting to play so early, like playing with adults, helped you to not only be a better beach player, but a better grass player as well? Uh, yeah, for sure. Um, I, especially in, in futsal, too, I, uh, I always played with older players, you know, and uh, I, th I think that definitely helped with – my uh, my toughness, uh, my speed of play, uh, both in beach and futsal. In outdoor, I, I always play with players my age, um, but I think that um, yeah, playing with older players is, is like such a good uh, it's just such a good thing to do as uh, as a young player. I think that's true for every sport. If you look and see for the development of anybody, like playing basketball with somebody that's older than you, taller than you, it, it pushes you to be and progress to be better than kids your age. So now I want to transition to your time with NorCal BSC. What do you think is the motivation behind starting NorCal Beach Soccer Club? 
um, the motivation. I wasn't around like when when it all started. I think I was in college when they they first put this together. But uh, there was a pretty like motivated group, including my my older cousin, um, and then um, Yuri Morales, who played uh, for the national team. Uh, Alan Grady. I don't know. You know, this, uh, these are just guys from the area who who were like really into beach soccer, but. And then their goal was to start a professional club that could compete, you know, not only in the local uh, tournaments like the San Diego and the Virginia Beach tournaments, but in, in bigger tournaments, you know, uh, in other countries around the world, you know, if not, if not to win the cash prize, just to have, a, you know, experience playing at a really high level of sport, you know, on a beach with like, um, it's really like, it was a really positive environment. Everybody within the beach soccer community is, is like super friendly and close. Um, so I think their, their goal was to like, to still play uh, professionally, you know, um, in, in a different sport that's that's still up and coming, uh, but also just have have a fun time, <laughs> and uh, and then maybe you know see where that where that goes. I think that their their vision was to maybe have a league at some point, like within California, uh, and I think it still is, you know. Um, but we got to take it step by step at this point, and uh, with the pandemic, it's not really helping with the development, but. <laughs> um, I think that was, that was the ultimate goal is to, you know, play professionally, somewhat professionally, like in, in, in beach soccer, not, not only here in other countries, uh, but also just, I don't know, grow the sport and, and, and see where, where, that, uh, where that goes from there. So what are your hopes and goals for playing with them? Um, I would love to compete with, with the NorCal club in uh, tournaments in other countries and, and see how we do. You know, we, we, we've, we've had we've had decent showings in the, the local tournament. So I think before we we do that, we go to other countries. I think we got to bring younger players in, develop them, show them the beach game. Um, but that, that my goal is to is what the, the, the NorCal goal is, is to not only compete uh, in these in these tournaments, but to have success. So but the first step, I think, is finding like, the next generation of players and uh, developing them as beach soccer players, because when you go to these tournaments, um, with players that like that grew up playing beach soccer, it's it's a totally different game, and it's hard to compete <laughs> with the guys that who are with the guys who know what they're actually doing. And um, so yeah, I don't know that, that, that. I guess that's my answer is yeah, just develop younger players and 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 hopefully be a part of the team that can have success in other countries uh, for for these tournaments. Would you say one of your passions is developing, is to de help develop younger players? As you as you progressively get a little older and more mature in the game. Yeah, definitely. Uh, like I, I still want to make sure that I, I spend, uh, you know, the decent amount of time preparing myself and making myself the best player that I can be. Uh, but at the same time, I definitely have a passion. I coach a couple teams in San Francisco um, with the Glens, and um, I enjoy it a lot. You know, I. But yeah, I, 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 not only just for, not only for, you know, the sport itself, but just like what soccer's given to me throughout my life, all the lessons that it's given me. Like I wanna, I wanna give kids an opportunity to, to have to learn those lessons while playing a really fun game, you know. Um, so it's not, yeah, I wanna, I wanna develop players, you know, make them good soccer players, um, maybe beach soccer players as well. Uh, probably beach soccer players as well. That's honestly like I'm more honestly more probably more interested in developing beach soccer players because it's so new and it's such a niche market. Like and uh, it's growing. Like the club that I coach for, they're they're showing interest in uh, putting their teams, you know, more teams into the Tigers tournaments and then uh, maybe even traveling. So I don't know. A lot of stuff's happening. And um, uh, but I would love I would love to, to help you know be a bigger part of developing uh, younger players in the like in the years to come, especially when I start to transition. Uh, to you know, retire. <laughs> Tell me about the women who were ranked number eight by FIFA, but then lost to the men. I mean, the, while the men's team lost to Canada in the championship, do you think the men's team will be ranked by FIFA eventually? The women being ranked on FIFA uh, for NorCal, and yeah. the men not ranked yet, and following on that. Yeah, well, I mean, the men haven't really played. In, in any international tournaments. The last tournament that we played in was Tobago, which was pretty small. I think uh, I think the women having gone to the World Winners' Cup in, in Turkey, 
and, and having the success that they did against like the top female players in the world really made a statement for like why they should be, uh, you know, ranked as high as they are. The men haven't really like, we haven't really put ourselves in a position to, to have like, you know, to be in those rankings. But so I don't think like we deserve it to this point. I think, I think the women, the women have, but hopefully that changes in the next few years. So you, you kind of brushed by this a little bit with you coaching the San Francisco Glens. How do you see yourself as a coach? And how, is, how has your time been as a coach so far? It's, it's been interesting. I've had a few different ages. Um, I, I have a, a full-time job as an electrician. Um, so I coach, coaching has kind of been uh, secondary to my, my, my uh, first job. But my goal is to transition into coaching and spending more time doing that and training kids, maybe having like my own program on grass, on the beach. So up until this point, um, it hasn't, I haven't developed as a coach or as, as a trainer the way that, you know, I, I hope to in the future. Uh, I've, I've just realized, you know, with this, the small amount of time that I've spent coaching that I do have a passion for, for training kids and, um, you know, uh, and, and, and coaching teams. So uh, I definitely like, will have a lot of room for growth in that area. Do you spend time with your kids in the sand yet? And if you do, do you plan to do it more, more often? Yeah, recently, because of uh, the limited field space in San Francisco, we have one of my teams hasn't had a permit for the third practice that they're supposed to have uh, each week. So what I've done and what a lot of the other coaches have done as well is uh, use the space on the, on the sand. So it was just recently that I started training kids, uh, like my, my teams uh, out there. You know, I, I'm showing them, um, beach soccer skills, but I'm also, you know, I'm just out there making sure that they have fun. You know, that's like, that's the main thing. I want to make sure they have fun. And if they like it enough, they want to spend time out there, um, then we can get a little bit more serious about beach soccer. Um, and then, but, and then once the restrictions, you know, uh, get taken off uh, in this pandemic settles down, my plan is to maybe have like smaller, like private groups of kids go out there, you know, and, and, and find ones who are, are more serious about it. And then also, um, connect with the club, with the, uh, with the Glens to see if they want to make it like part of their program. Uh, just the way that like futsal is, you know, I think they can develop in grass by training on the, on the sand, the way that they, you know, in, in different ways than futsal provides. But I think, I think it could, uh, I think it could be really beneficial to the kids, you know, whether they play beach soccer or not in the future, just their development as soccer players in general. I know that COVID is a unique situation for everyone. How has it impacted your your coaching your coaching style and your coaching ability? Uh, well, we have been we haven't been able to have we haven't been able to to have physical contact for a lot of the trainings. You know, there was a certain parts where we were allowed to to train. Um, we have to wear masks, so obviously the communication part is like a little bit more difficult. Um, and I think the commitment from certain from players. You know, obviously with the concern of like their parents uh, hasn't really been there. Um, and also there's sort of a, a lack of motivation because of uh, because there's no games going on around. There's no leagues, there's no tournaments. So they're just like, they're just training to train. You know, I, I think the most fun part for them is the games. And um, so, uh, and, you know, being, a, being that young, you don't really realize like how important the training is and uh, that they need to stay motivated regardless of whether they have games or not. But I think that, that that motivation factor and that, that commitment has definitely been lacking a little bit um, during the pandemic. Have you found a solution to that problem yet? Uh, a solution to keep them motivated? Like, what are some, what are some things that you can do to keep them uh, intrinsically motivated for playing B soccer? I uh, just continue to remind them that the games will come. You know, and, and, and how and, and remind them how important it is to, to stay in shape and, and continue to train, not only for uh, for for soccer, but just like you know, uh, to uh, to have a, like a will to improve, like in, in any area that they want, like they're you know semi serious about. You know, I think that if they, uh, I think that if they if they want to if they want to play soccer, like they should you know try their best to to improve as as athletes and as as players, so um, 
I tell them like, yo, it's either that you, you either commit your time or, or don't at all. <laughs> you know, I, I don't, I don't, I don't see like two ways about it. It's like, you know, you can try your best, use, use your time outside uh, to, to become the best player, the best athlete that you can be. Uh, Cause I think that's, that's the approach you got to have with, with anything in life. So I, I, I just a, a constant reminder of, of, of that, I guess. Um, and then just try to make the trainings more uh, competitive, you know, uh, have like, you know, give the winners, you know, a little uh, prize at the end of, of games, you know, and just keep them excited in that way too. Do you think it would be beneficial to start kids at a young, at an even younger age than what you started at? And if so, how do you stave off burnout? Because I know burnout is a big factor when playing sports. Hmm. Um, I definitely think that kids, you know, starting beach soccer at an earlier stage will help them become uh, become better players and athletes. Um, even if it's not just for like, even if it's not for the beach soccer purposes, just to literally like run in the sand, uh, train in the sand. Uh, and then the best way to avoid burnout, I think for me is to have other hobbies, is uh, to play other sports, to, you know, have other things going on in life. Because when, obviously when you're, when you have one thing that you're, you're focusing all your time and energy on, um, it's it eventually it's going to burn out, I think. So it's important to have a sort of balance you know, with, uh, with that. And other sports, yeah. other sports too help. I think not only will help, would help uh, with the with the burnout, but like their development. You know, you know having to uh, their development as athletes. I think I think is is uh, what playing multiple sports can provide. If you don't mind asking, how how did you cope with that, and what what are some things that you did outside of soccer to keep you motivated? Uh, when I was a lot younger, I skateboarded, uh, I played, you know, it helped, it helped with my balance, you know, um, I don't know, just any, any games, like any competitions, uh, ping pong, <laughs> pool, I don't know, like we're working, working your mind in different ways. Uh, I played a little bit of basketball, so that helped, that helped with my hops, with my, with my, you know, uh, with quickness and, and explosiveness. Uh, what else? But yeah, for me, I was pretty committed to soccer. I played like all different forms of soccer. Uh, I don't know, and also just spending time outside. You know, what, what, and now obviously, I think that's that's tough for kids, uh, and 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 especially with technology, not just the pandemic, but with the technologies out right now. So just being out, you know, climbing trees, like being a kid. Yeah, I agree. We you don't see as many kids outside anymore. I mean, no. that's also due to society these days. Is it is it safe to be outside? Yeah. Uh, as long as you're like, you know, isolated. I think, got some space. You know, you're not putting anybody's lives in harm. I think it's. I think it's uh, good to get out. Well, Gabe, I really thank you for um, spending your time, taking your time out your day to answer, answer, do this interview, answer a couple of questions for us. I really do. Uh, I really thank you for doing that. And it was really nice yeah. talking to you. I appreciate you for having me on. This was, uh, this was cool. Well, we appreciate you even more, Gabe. <laughs> it's, it's been an honor. And it was nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too, Corey. Well, that's it for the third installment of the Pro MB Soccer Podcast. Personally, I would like to thank Gabe for coming on the show and answering all questions we have for him. And we'd like to invite the audience back for another for the fourth episode of the Pro MB Soccer Podcast. Thank you.